Hi, uh, my name is uh, Vahan Davudian, physicist experimentalist. Sorry, I have to sit because these are low. I have to demonstrate so many experiments. Yeah, I have 30 years experience in physics and especially in experiments. And I have never seen, I uploaded almost 20 theories like three months ago. I have never seen in any books. Those are so unique. And then people emailed me, they loved it. But you know, it was great and that was the best feedback for me. I love it. Before I start my theory, well it's not a theory today, we are talking about invention. And this is just an invention and it's called new concept in DC motors without reversing current or without using commutators. And in fact, uh, when Michael Faraday started the first electric motor, it didn't even look like electric motor. But the concept, 191 years, it has not been changed. It's an interaction of charged particle in a magnetic field. Well, of course, there's no doubt we have improved the efficiency, maybe five, six, 700 percent, but the interaction is the same. And then uh, I came up with this idea, but overall I want to thank uh, YouTube because they just provided this amazing opportunity. They are so comprehensive, the work they provide, I mean the way they do it is so good, it's so scientific and I appreciate that and in fact, you know, I called them uh, YouTube Synapse. Synapse is a junction in human brain and it's amazing. It is connecting billions of billions of neurons together and in fact I am comparing to the huge network or internet. That is exactly what the YouTube does because the reason why I upload my theories, people upload their theories, and nobody knows everything about the physics or science, so we learn. This is the way that the YouTube, I think it's a huge university, and people are, you know, uploading their videos and they, they learn a lot, and it doesn't matter how much you know about the physics, every time you come up with something, it's a new. So, and like I said that today, I have to have some posters and then first of all I have to show you these posters like this one here and then explain a little bit but it'll be a little bit difficult so I just don't want you to be overwhelmed because this has to do with the subatomic particles and especially the most important one which is electrons. And uh, you know, in fact, electrons were so important, well, still important in our life. Everything in electromagnetism, uh, induction, you name it, electron has to do with it. So anyway, my great inspiration came from uh, five amazing scientists. They are as follows. The first one, which mine is based on it, is called Hendrik Lorentz Forces. Well, in fact, you know, his helper, you know, his assistant, uh, assistants, Peter Zeeman, they were fantastic, uh, you know, both from Holland, and uh, they did an amazing job. They got Nobel Prize in physics. They discovered something which was beyond our imagination. And they got a Nobel Prize for it, and then, the, you know, just uh, make it short. So they had to, you know, split the, you know, they, they split the spectral lines within magnetic field, both of them, and uh, even Peter Zeeman was a fantastic uh, scientist and then they got the Nobel Prize. But imagine how important this job is. The spectral lines is so important in our life. We can even watch the stars without even being there. We can analyze their composition. And in fact, helium was discovered exactly the same way. So what they did, they did a fantastic job. And then I have to go back a little bit in history so you know exactly what happened. Sir Isaac Newton was a great scientist, but you know, his uh, work in optic is not complete. Even though that book is fabulous, but it's not complete. After him, there was a lens maker. He had no education. His name was Fran Hofer. And he came up with 510, 510 spectral line. 
and that changed the world. But unfortunately, he didn't have a high education and he had no idea why this happened. But that was great job because that was the cause and then the effect was Ruben, Mr. Ruben who was a chemist and then Kirchhoff who was a fantastic physicist and they came over, they analyzed and that was breakthrough in science. They said each element in the universe absorbs and emits special lines. And uh, you know, it's a little bit difficult, but you know, I just make it short. It's just absorption and emission. And the absorption is always black lines, and then the emissions is, uh, uh, you know, bright lines. Like, you know, if you go on a helium, it has a different, and they call it fingerprint. So see how important job they did. And the next one, which I was inspired, was German physicist Fritz London. He was an amazing scientist, and then he came up with the Fritz London dispersion for forces. And that was also amazing. And the next one was Mr. Van der Waal. He was also Dutch, and then overall it's almost, you know, Van der Waal forces is almost like, you know, Fritz London, this version almost is the same thing. And the most important one, which is the greatest mind in the history of mankind, is James Clark Maxwell. Well, I have to explain a little bit why this is unique. I have never seen in my life a single wire like this, which is less than two grams, can rotate. And imagine I did this. The reason why I did this is because of Lorentz forces. So like I said, this is a special electric motor and I show you here. And it is not using any commutator. So the deflection, which is the Herbig lorentz forces, is caused the rotation. And even if I connect for a second, that goes to 1000 RPM. That's how powerful it is. So this is a new concept. And then I show you everything. So the concept is like this. You have this, well of course this is the simple one. And then you can see, I show you here. This is a little bit large. See, these are single wires, so you can tell, like that one. Well, of course, this is a little bit exaggeration, it's too big. But imagine, there is no commutator. So what it is, we had to short circuit this, and then when I put positive here, negative in a 1L shape or 1U shape, it deflects. Well, of course, there must be a magnetic field, uh, you know, as usual, it's like, mm, south and north and the deflection is so good well of course i mean you can't expect this i mean to go like 2000 or i mean 10000 rpm like the other ones i show you but this is the way it was so this is shorted it goes like that and the other one goes shorted like that it goes all the way but my great idea came when i came to one single wire but you may wonder, why do I have this white wire here? Galileo was an amazing scientist. The first law of motion is called laws of inertia. So the reason why this rotates, see, it's so important. It has to do with the lever also. See how far it is from the axis of the rotation. So I call this lever. Well, of course, this is almost like, would say, one inch or you know two and a half centimeter but imagine and then i had to add this white one for more moment of inertia and this in fact it rotates real good but of course it's not strong enough they wobble a little bit but that's okay they rotate and let me see what else do i have here and uh, lorenz forces is so important like i said this is the way it goes and then the first one and in fact, this is the, I mean, uh, cross section of what I did. But my great inspiration came from here. Let me show you, which no one has done in the history. See, this is a huge 
you know, of course it doesn't work. I had to display, and you see this one, the, see? Connection for the blue one or S one, and then, or S, and then this is connection for uh, N. But it took me many years because it was extremely, extremely difficult to figure this out. One day I remember we had a, you know, friend from, uh, he was PhD in physics. I discussed this with him and then he loved this idea. I said, what if I replace this, you know, I have N and S and then I have S and N. What if I replace this with just a wire? And the physicist said, well, I don't know. I said, you know, I figured it out. And then I realized I have to do that with the electrons. Electron is amazing subatomic particle. And then I had to go back all the way to dipole. And that is why it makes it a little bit difficult. It makes it a little bit more complicated. But I just don't want you to be overwhelmed. I will explain everything. So, imagine this S or the red, red, this is clockwise. And then I did not cut this wire and immediately I changed this counterclockwise. Let me see if I have one here. I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Great invention because uh, you know that uh, guy, you know, my friend, he was amazed. So imagine I have clockwise here, I have clockwise here. If I connect this to positive, I mean the flow of current positive to negative, both of them show S. But see, this is the trick I did when I reverse this. And imagine you are not changing the flow of current. You are changing the dipole's orientation with the respect to the flow of current or flow of electrons. Well, of course, this is the smaller one. And then um, I had to get gas meter because if you are a physical experimentalist, you don't have a laser beam for the RPM, you don't have a gas meter, you won't be able to do anything. And this gas meter helped me a lot. And in fact, uh, this is so accurate and expensive. I've had this for so many years. And this shows almost 19,000 gas. And the gas was amazing German scientist. And he was the one, in fact, who came up with the idea that the magnetic field is not outside the Earth, it's inside the Earth. It was always controversy, but uh, he was so smart, and then he came up with this idea, and then Maxwell loved him. Maxwell used two or three formulas uh, in his, you know, famous equations, and uh, this was, uh, yeah, his name was uh, um, Carl, uh, Carl Gauss. Yeah, okay. So, this is the way I did, and then I realized this is an amazing idea. Well, of course, you know what? My lab is an ordinary lab. This is my car garage. But I could say, I'm not talking about millisecond, I'm talking about microsecond. As soon as I connect it to DC voltage, 12 volts, this becomes south, or, uh, I mean north, and the other one becomes also north. Because this is the way the flow of current is, is both are the same direction. So practically, if I overlap this, it's going to be the same. But as soon as I reverse this, so see what happened? One becomes north, one becomes south. If I reverse it again, it becomes north and north. And this is, of course, the smaller one. It's the same thing. But uh, I had to use thick wires because they can carry real good... Uh, you know, in current. Okay, so, and uh, Henrik Lorenz forces like this. Uh, well, no, you, no, I'm sorry, I have, I have to explain this. See, this is the cross, uh, you know, action. You can see one, two, three, four. 
one, two, three, four. So this is the cross section, and in fact, each one is located 180 degrees. So exactly like this, you can see the blue and red are covering 180 degrees. But the thing is, they, you know, flow of current is not changing. It's exactly the same. So as soon as it rotates like this, it goes to the other one, goes to the other one. And how could you expect something like this goes more than 12,000 or even 15,000 RPM? That was incredible. So, let me put this down and then I can have more posters and then I can explain exactly how. This is another poster and this is a little bit more scientific but you know I have to finish this first and then I can start my experiment so Okay, so new concept in DC motor, electrons, magnetic dipole, moment explained by Vahanda Vudyan, physics experimentalist, and my email is vahandavudyan at al.com. And electrons are amazing, I explained here, have magnetic dipole moments. Since the separation of charges are 360 degrees all around the wire, clockwise or counterclockwise, the electron's magnetic dipole moment is reversed with reference to the flow of electrons or current. And in fact, I remember I read an article a long time ago, you know, they got the Nobel Prize in uh, Physics, and it's called a Scanning Tunneling Microscope. And it's amazing, that shows that, you know, in one millimeter, or one millimeter wire, there are billions of dipoles. But what is this dipole? In like diamagnetic, in paramagnetic, we're talking about copper, gold, silver, everything they have. And what is this dipole? Dipole is exactly separation of charges. But the distance, unfortunately, no one knows how small they are. And electrons, I have no idea. Sometimes they say they have mass, sometimes they say they have no mass. But I'm sure they, they, do, they do have mass, electrons. So, and then I had to come up with this idea for the Earth and the one millimeter. When I spoke in Denver, in, uh, you know, university, and they loved this idea, I said, Juan, well, how could you do this? I compared one millimeter wire to earth. And imagine these are, you know, S or S, but you know, I had to do blue and red, and then I will, uh, you know, explain exactly what happened inside the earth, because they did not explain why do we have S and N. And you know what, like 120, 130 years, it changed a little bit from here to here. But it doesn't matter. See that they're one in one line. And then when I compared with one millimeter, and then I realized they're exactly the same. The interaction of the dipoles is causing the north and south, or positive and negative. Now imagine, and God knows it's not even quintillion, you have to go all the way to 24 zeros or even more. How many electrons are there? How many dipoles are there? And then they interact. So what happened, you can see here, I showed much better. The interactions are so good and in the center, always you can see, interaction is more and more and more and more. And then when it comes to the boundaries, I mean, no, no, I'm sorry, cancellation is more, or, well, they, they do have interaction. And then when it comes to the boundaries, or where the earth, you know, ends, see, it's less, and that is as far as the dipole can go, so they reverse it to plus or minus. This is exactly what happened in, uh, you know, uh, one millimeter wire. So it's the same thing, and in fact, uh, I had, you know, I have to mention this, this is so important. 
I uploaded my theories, and especially this was important, I worked on this like four years, it's called the positive and negative charges, the theory of separation of charges by Vahon Davudian, physics experimentalist, and in fact we uploaded this on YouTube like uh, May 16th, and you can watch it, I have explained it almost one hour and 45 minutes, but today I'm not going to explain that much because I did uh, change everything and then uh, I had to do this. So, and then let me see what else do I have. And like I said, uh, in diamagnetic and paramagnetic, you know, like I would say, uh, gold, silver, copper, bismuth, mercury, and uh, like, you know, uh, Aluminum, oxygen, titanium, dipoles interaction are so amazing. So exactly they need a force or they need the electric charge to be aligned. That's exactly what happened. My best analogy is we have charges in the sky, like quintillion of charges in the sky. When that, you know, Lightning bolt helps, you can see, it's almost one line. Well, of course, it's zigzag most of the time, so it's connecting all together, ionizing everything. This is exactly what happened. And then, uh, like I said, this is so important, and like I said, always in the center, what happened, the interactions are more and more, they cancel each other. By the time they get to the boundaries, the interaction is almost none because one face is already positive and you know, they don't have any other places to go and the other face is negative. So that is the mystery for having north and south. Well, my best analogy is, uh, his name was uh, James Weber, but unfortunately most people don't even know about him. He was German. Yeah, and then uh, he came up with an idea that molecular magnetic theory. And unfortunately I have never seen in any book, this book was like 60 years old and I found it. And uh, his name was James uh, Weber and then that was a good idea. Because James Weber said, if you have like a one magnet, you cut it in 10, 20, 100, 1 million, 1 billion pieces, always they kept their orientation. North, south, north, south, north, south. And then it was substantiated because Mr. James Weber said, yeah, if you can do all the way to the molecular liver, well, well of course, at that time, it was not that, you know, they didn't even know that much. But you know, we cannot go to the even dipole because it's so small. And in fact, his theory is substantiated because it doesn't matter how many times you cut the magnet. It's going to be smaller, 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 smaller. And finally, you give up because you won't be able to do it. And I remember I conducted this experiment at Regis University. They loved the idea. I had to get maybe 20 magnets, a strong, you know, ceramic, and then I had to pound them, which is not a good idea. If you pound on a magnet, if you drop a magnet, if you heat it up, according to Curie's, you know, you lose the magnetism. I knew about that. But despite the fact I did it, I pounded on, on, on them. And then, guess what? I made it like a powder, and that was like a globe, exactly two inches in diameter. When I showed them in uh, Regis University, they loved it. I said, look, I have a compass here, I have a gas meter, and guess what? It's exactly S and N. Well, of course, I have to confess, the magnetic force was lost almost 70%, but 30% was showing the, uh, you know, north and south and south and north. And this is about the Lorentz forces. I have to show you.
Sometimes, if it's not like this, it's not going to be focused. So, like I said, he was a dark scientist, and then uh, he was a solid <coughs> conference so many times. And in fact, he was as good as Albert Einstein because his transformation was so amazing, and then everybody loved. But I remember I came up with this idea about why everything, the forces, are always perpendicular. See, that's Lorentz. Force is equal to Q V times B, magnetic field, electric field. And he was an amazing scientist. And this is the way it says, you know, force is equal to charge times velocity times magnetic field times sine of angle. Well, of course, this was explained a long time ago, but uh, Michael, I read it, but it wasn't exactly like this. So, overall, the idea is, like I said, 190 years ago started with uh, uh, Michael uh, Faraday, it's the same thing, it's interaction of charged particles in a magnetic field, it doesn't matter. It's the interaction of charged particle in magnetic field. It doesn't matter how you do it, that is the same thing. So this is the interaction of charged particle, uh, I mean, uh, uh, moving charges in magnetic field. This is another poster. This is almost the one I showed you a few minutes ago for the Earth. In fact, I had to do so a little bit smaller than this one and explain the eyeballs. And uh, overall, you know, the name, I mean, the definition is like this New concept in Isimotos, dipole is the separation of positive and negative charges, equal magnetic but opposite sides. Sides. Separated by some, some distance. We have no idea how they are. Like I said, it mark one millimeter. Wire, microscopic. Eyeballs produce opposite surface charges. It means that, you know, they interact together, like I said a few minutes ago. See, these are like, you know, one magnet, two, three, four magnets. They interact with each other. And overall, what they do in the center here, say like this, they cancel. So we have positive, negative, positive, negative. Well, of course, there are a quintillion of them. I had to do only three. But see, here, they have no idea. We have minus, but here we have plus. And, you know, overall, they make the poles or you know they make that pretty you know like north and south and north and south this is another poster and like I said if you don't have This is the one I got for the RPM. Well, of course, I have to show you. This is for RPM, and it goes to uh, 99,000 RPM, which is amazing. And this one is my gas meter, which goes to 19,000 gas. And imagine if you don't have this, let me turn it on so you can see the display. This is called gas meter and this is DC gas meter. If you don't have this, your experiment is not going to be good. You always need to substantiate your experiment. You have to make sure that you know you do everything right and then you have to do with a great precision. You know, in science, if you don't have a great precision, you won't be able to do anything. And uh, I think it's time for the it's time for the experiment now. I have to start the experiment now. And then I have to start with a single one, which is like a, uh, it's called a single wire. And let me put this down, get the battery off. I don't even have to get the battery off. I can do it like this. So.
So imagine, this is this is a signal wire, and like I said, the reason why I have like you know two U shapes because okay because it's getting moment of inertia and you can see I have only one magnet that's so powerful I just wanted to display that you know how good Lorentz forces are even one magnet can do it with two magnets of course it's more practical I show you and it doesn't matter if you connect positive to negative negative to it doesn't make any difference because Lorentz forces are exactly like you know your analog multimeter and it doesn't matter which way the current goes is interacting so let me see if I can display this did you see well of course it's not it's almost like I would say 60 rpm but it's more than enough for my purpose and this one is more practical let's see, okay, this one is more practical because you see how thick these are these are more and in fact then I just don't want you to confuse this is not commutator well practically I am shorting this the reason why I do this I just wanted to show you that Henry Lorenz forces how good they are see you short this This one also goes like 120 RPM, which is more than enough for my purpose. But in order for the you know physic lovers to understand Henrik Lorenz, I had to do something like this, which is so simple. This is my idea always. I have to get this multimeter. This is my idea that you know every time you want to explain something, if you don't have experiment, you know, physics lovers or you know student or whoever watches these things, they won't be able to understand. So this is almost like been around like hundred years. It's called analog multimeter. You can see here inside there is a coil, little coil, and there are two magnets S and N. And you know what? This never been changed. I remember when I was a kid, we had this. But nowadays, they don't even use this anymore. Everything is digital. But I love this because it does explain everything. So this is also Henrik Lorenz forces. It depends on how much current goes in, and then that deflection is directly proportional to the amount of current. This is exactly the same thing. So, well, of course, this is used in, uh, I mean, so many concepts like, you know, um, speakers and so on, so on, so But overall, this is the Henry Lorenz forces. Let me show you. See this? This is like an L-shaped. Uh, this is like an l shape, And then it can go like 180. Well, of course, don't need it a lot. And then when I short this, see what happened. Like I said, Henry Lorenz means it's an interaction of moving charges or charged particles in magnetic field. So it, depending upon the polarity, it goes to the right or left. Let me show you. Oh, I have to turn this on. Did you see that? Now if I go the other way, it's going to go the other way, because it's deflected. Did you see? Okay. 
In fact, uh, this is the first one I did, and let me show you. You see how fine they are. So you can see exactly one coil is clockwise and the other one is counterclockwise. And you can see the separation here. This one is connected here and this one is connected there. But you know what? They're independent. It is not like ordinary DC motors that they're all connected. No. You know, I don't have to change the reverse the current. So there is one connector here, one connector here. What it does, the rotor is rotating. So this one goes almost like 6,000 RPM because the reason why I had to improve this because it was heavy and then the inertia plays important roles in the mass, more mass. But you know, it works. Let me show you here. Let's see how we can do this. I think I I have to put this right there so you can see much better how that works. See this one, I don't have the connector, I have to hold it by hand. The reason why I want to do that just so you can see how that works. It's so powerful. This one is the most powerful one I made. This one goes to 12,000 RPM. But you can see this one is different because I have permanent connectors. And unfortunately I don't have a lot of tools. They should have been copper. And then I couldn't find exactly the same thick, I mean thin uh, sheets like that. It wasn't available, you know. I did my best. So I used whatever I could find. As long as I could explain the concept, people would understand. So it doesn't necessarily have to be copper, because copper, I love it, they have more free electrons. So this is the one, see, you can see, we have the connections. Let me turn it around so we can connect this to 12 volt DC. And that one is the same way, this one is the same way, it depends on Did you see how good it is? I mean it's unbelievable how powerful it goes I mean, you can't even stop it. I have two more. Let me show you, show those two. Well, of course, I forgot uh, to mention this. The reason why, you know, my theory is so important in wire. So think about this as one millimeter wire. And it's amazing. I compared one millimeter exactly with Earth. You see those red and green dots? That's exactly concentric magnetic field. And then I compared this like a 10, yeah, maybe five inches to earth. And then earth is exactly like a 
you know, like this, like higher, and then you can see it's a reverse law is also for the wire. If I have a magnet, like two centimeter, and then I make it four centimeter, the interaction will be less. I make it less, and be less. And you can see in factories the way they do it. I have seen. Well, of course, I can't do it. They do it with great precision. It's a laser precision, I call it. One millimeter or even sometimes less. I mean, it's so fine. So the more closer, it's exactly like Earth. So those concentric lines are what? A magnetic field. And, you know, it depends on how much current. And, you know, those lines are exactly proportional to amount of current is flowing. It doesn't matter from positive to negative or negative to positive because everything in science, in electromagnetism, is arbitrary. It's, it depends on which way this uh, you know, current is flowing. And it doesn't matter, it does the job. So this is the one I just wanted to explain. And then I have two more. Because unfortunately we moved and then I have no idea what happened. We had to lose most of them, we had to toss all of them. And then I had everything, but unfortunately I couldn't take everything. But at least I'm glad, you know, I can, you know, show you what the concept is, how they work. I have to mention here something is so important and in fact uh, this has to do with the kinetic energy and that is so important and in fact when I do this even this single one it doesn't matter the important part is as soon as they become they overcome the inertia and then immediately kinetic energy comes in the equation and imagine, like I said, with one single contact, it goes 1000 RPM, that's how good they are. So they don't have to change the flow of current or anything, but overall this is the way they do. And uh, I remember the magnet is the same way, and like I explained it, and then uh, this was amazing thing happened to me in uh, Westminster, Colorado, and then I was so happy to saw that. One day I was doing some experiment, that was year 2000, and then I had bar magnets, little bar magnets like this, and I lost some, I lost one, I had no idea what happened, and in fact it fell behind my shelf, the shelf was iron, that was a huge shelf, behind my shelf and then I couldn't find it. After 12 years we moved, and then all of a sudden I saw there was a magnet sticking to my shelf. I said, I better check out with my gas meter to see how it is. When I checked that, you may not believe. It was 70% loss in magnetism. And gas meter was showing almost 30%. And imagine, if I was going to do that with the electromagnet, I should play, you know, I should have spent thousands of dollars, in, you know, changing the batteries. But see, magnets are so amazing. Why do they keep that magnetism for 10, 20, 30, 100 years? And imagine that magnet would still be 100% if it was not stuck to iron. But because it was stuck to iron after a while, you know, it's called induction. It's just inducing. Because the magnet uh, was so small and the shelf was so huge, the surface made a big difference. Then it was, you know, expanding. And then I realized that's exactly what happened. That's why you cannot detach some magnets after a while. I remember I did this once for one month. I could not remove those magnets. I had to put a vice to, you know, detach it. Anyway, 
I have to show you here something for the neodymium. Let me see if I have one neodymium here. I think I did have one. I put it somewhere here. Uh, either way, this was another one. This is a different one. See what I did? I had to do the same thing. So clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise. This was so practical and good because the reason why, you know, I did this clockwise, counterclockwise exactly like, you know, like a induction motors a little bit oblique and that torque was amazing this one also goes 10,000 10, rpm but unfortunately I took it apart I don't have it anyway so thank you for you know being with me this 45 minutes and uh, I like to thank uh, like I said YouTube and then there's some scientists that you know I like them one of them is Dr. Michio Kako which is my favorite scientist he's so genius and he has a book called Teleportation I love it Are We Alone and then always I read those books because uh, he is a great inspiration for me and I love him and then there's another uh, scientist his name is Dr. Nick Lucid and his experiments are also good another uh, you know his name is Dr. Derek Mueller, he has a special experiment like me. I like him, he's a young, uh, enthusiastic person. There's another uh, young girl, her name is a uh, physics girl, Dr. Diana Cowan. She is so good, her knowledge is beyond my expectation. And then I like her ideas and always I watch it on YouTube. And then uh, there is another person, his name is uh, Dr. Arvin Ash, and he explains everything. I remember long time ago when I watched uh, Maxwell's equation. That was beyond my imagination how good that was. There's another person, he's so good, his name is Professor. They call him Professor Dave. And you know, I like him because uh, his ideas about the laws of thermodynamics is so amazing and always I inspired. And in fact, um, I am a YouTube lover myself because long time ago in Denver, Colorado, I used to watch a Discovery Channel and the Science Channel, Universe and so and so. And then when we came here in Dallas, Texas, it's different now. I can see I can get the most of everything from the YouTube because I can watch the earth, I can watch the physics, I can watch the universe and then everything else. But the important thing in a science is, you know, I don't want you to encourage me by subscribing. Your best important thing is if, you know, I need a feedback. You know, in electronics, when I learned it was 29 years old, I remember that was an important concept. They said oscillation will stop. It doesn't matter. Harmonic oscillator like, uh, uh, I mean, pendulum or electronic oscillators like, uh, you know, tank circuit, it will stop. Even in atomic and subatomic or, you know, just ordinary level. If there is no feedback, so your feedback is not the subscription. Your feedback is, you know, if you email me, if you call me, oh, and I have this question, I want to exchange views with you. And like I said, I mentioned this scientist, and hopefully they can get in touch with me. This is the way we can promote the science. If I don't exchange with Dr. Michio Kako, which is, you know, he is much better. He knows everything much better than I do. So I don't learn. Well, I'm not saying or implying that Dr. Michio Kako will learn from me but you know because my things are unique especially this invention and uh, I'm hoping they will uh, you know get in touch with me and uh, you know the thing is I don't have uh, a lot of tools and like I said see this is like a two poles I, I would say if I have a factory to do this it can do four, it can go eight, it can go 16, it can go 32, it can go 64, exactly like DC motors. I have a DC motors goes to 40,000 RPM. But because, you know, mine is a prototype. It is not like, uh, you know, factory, and it doesn't matter how good I am in physics or electronics, my precision is not 100%, but in the factories they have the tools, their precision is 100%, mine is not. So if, I, if they can make this 16, 
So instead of guess what, 12,000 I have maximum, it can go to 24, it can go 34, and I won't be surprised if one day this replaces the DC motors. Well, of course, I have to confess something. This is not as powerful as DC motors. But who cares? When I compare Tesla, it goes 18,000 RPM versus, you know, Mercedes-Benz goes to 6,000 RPM with huge engine and huge transmission. Which one is the best? Tesla's motor, 18,000. So that's why if you ask more technologies why they don't even have a gearbox, they don't need a gearbox, they don't need a transmission. It's a single transmission. But you know, like ordinary cars, I remember the transmission is almost like 200 pounds. So imagine how important it is if one day this replaces the ordinary one because you know it's light and I did not mention this. I am not using any ferromagnetic, I am using PVC and that is the secret. See this is pure PVC and that's not ferromagnetic. Because I was thinking if it's a ferromagnetic like iron, nick, uh, I mean nickel or cobalt, so they will interact. So this made a big difference and uh, I'm hoping, like I said, one day, uh, you know, the factories can come forward and get this idea and develop this. Well, of course, like I said, uh, it's been, uh, don't want to explain, like two, three hours is going to be boring. And like I said, this concept is so important, it's everything has to do with the dipoles which is so small, an electron even has a dipole, positive and negative charges, but like I said, we don't know the separation of charges, but like I said, in my theories, I explained um, positive and negative, and then it's uh, the separation of charges by Vahanda Vutyan, and that took me so many years to prepare, and then it's posted up, uh, you know, on, uh, YouTube you can watch and then you will understand exactly what I mean you know dipoles and then what I mean by you know London forces what I mean by the Van der Waal forces what I mean by the Hendrik Lorenz and uh, Peter Zeman and then you will understand exactly how this works and I just wanted to thank and then uh, like I said I look forward to hear about you guys if you have any comments or you have anything you let me know and like I said this is my Email Vahan uh, Davudyan. Okay, I do have it right there. Vahan Davudyan at AOL.com. And uh, always, you know, I'm retired now, I have plenty of time. And anytime you have any question, I can even come to your lab or university and then explain everything. Well, of course, I'm not playing, I'm so intelligent, but as far as I can do, you know, as much as I can, I do my best, my ability, my knowledge to explain everything and don't worry about that if it's not beyond if it's even beyond my expertise don't worry about that I'm a great researcher I can dig it out for you the best best I will not give up anything and then I will dig it out for you and then I will consult some you know people who know much better than I do like physicists and then uh, I will do everything and you may not believe every day I watch like three hours on YouTube and then I'm not watching shows and things like that I'm trying to you know memorize most things I take notes God knows how much note I have in my science lab and uh, in fact uh, like uh, two weeks ago I did uh, for the animals plants insects and nature people loved it and I, I had never done this before because all my life I was inspired by nature, animals, insects and you know plants and uh, guess what these six theories I did so far I have more than 200 people watched it they loved it in less than six days and then you can watch I have ideas for Descartes Rene, and then I have ideas for you know <clears throat> inspiration how he inspired by a you know fly and then he came up with a coordinate without coordinate we will get in lost get lost in space and then I compared you know ioscope with so many things that and then uh, you can watch those 
And like I said, anytime you have any question, I'll be happy. I'm always at your disposal. So you can call me or you can email me or you can whatever you want. Uh, and then we can hopefully get in touch and then uh, we can promote the site. And that is my main objective. I have more theories and I'm hoping I will do that uh, for young generations and their good lessons, you know, starting from Archimedes all the way to Michael Faraday. And, you know, I have so much, you know, observations in my life. And then I will explain it to the best of my ability. And like I said, I am simplifying everything so everyone can understand. I'm not using a lot of formulas because I'm against it. You know, it must be good for the public so they will understand exactly how everything works. Thanks a lot for watching and I appreciate it.